My name is Sanam Naragi Andrelini. I run a non-governmental organization called the International Civil Society Action Network. Uh, we support and promote women's participation in peacemaking and peace processes and uh, social justice issues in countries affected by war and conflict. Um, and I'm from originally from Iran, uh, grew up in England, was married to an Italian, and now live in America. You know, I started my work in, um, in the 1990s. I was interested in the idea of how you bring about change in countries that are affected by conflict or by closed political space, dictatorship, authoritarianism, etc. Um, and how you do that without resorting to violence. Um, and I was inspired by the South African story at the time. Um, so that was kind of what propelled me into this line of work. I'd been involved in, um, I did, did some journalism, I, I thought documentary filmmaking might be a good way to go, but I wanted to be more of an active and active person as opposed to just an observer of these processes. Uh, so that's, that's how I got involved um, in this work. And then um, I became specifically interested in women in about 1998, because what, I, what we were seeing was that when you have conflicts that are inside countries, um, the international system, the UN and, and so forth, aren't really um, mandated to get involved. It's they're meant to respect the sovereignty of the government. So then the question becomes, who gets involved? And at that point, I was seeing through the work of my colleagues uh, working in London that very often women are at the front lines. They're standing up, they're, they're providing relief, they're doing peacemaking work, etc. And, and we had a conference with women from 50 different places, and it just blew my mind. That, that was it. That was, I, I, just, that, I was like, this is, these are the kind of people I want to work with and for. I'm inspired by the women I work with. Um, you know, for 20 years, every time I've been involved in a conflict country, I've come across people who've just stood up and said no. It's, it's amazing. I mean, it's whether it's Syria today, Nepal, Liberia, Kenya, it's, it's always been that whenever a crisis or a conflict comes, you come across people who have the courage to stand up and say, enough, and I don't want to do, you know, this is, we will not engage in war, um, and we will promote peace in our own communities. And that's incredibly inspirational. I mean, it's also very humbling, because I don't know whether I would, if it was in my own life, how I would react if this was happening to my own family. Um, because I think that at the end of the day, most of us, as, as ordinary people, we want good things in life. People don't, you know, war is made by a minority of the population in any given con context. Most, the vast majority here are either just affected by it, trying to live their lives, and then some percentage end up getting active and wanting to, to, to bring about the change. So to me, it, it's, it just seems absurd that we would allow a tiny minority of vocal, violent people shaping the future for the rest of us, when actually the rest of us really are, are the future. That, that's, you know, you need, societies need doctors and lawyers, they need musicians and artists and, you know, social workers and things like that. And I'm like, that's really the vast majority of the population. So it, it just seems obvious that that's the way we should be thinking about it. <laughs> Am I changing? I don't know whether I'm changing the world or not. Uh, I, so I, I've had the privilege of living in England after the Iranian Revolution. And, and certainly my own story um, is, has, a, has had trauma in it. I mean, I've had, you know, I didn't see my father for seven years when I was, um, when I was a child, and, uh, and, and the st our story continues. But when I compare it to the stories of other people that I've come across and the women that I meet, and um, really the pain that they've been through and how, they use, how they've drawn on that trauma of, of a child missing or, or, or losing everything and doing something positive, I've just felt that, that I've been privileged enough to live the life I've had, and so I should play my part in trying to make sure that their voices are heard. Um, globally and, and that they are the agents of change and, and you know and so why shouldn't we be supporting them so that that's it just seems like a it's like that's my responsibility if I can do make a little bit of change I think the the say I think we've I've learned to so de de depends on how we de describe setbacks I mean sometimes setbacks are that you go to a place and you come across 
such trauma that, that it, it affects you personally. I, I, when I meet young girls who, have, who are the same age as my children and they've been raped and, uh, you know, I, that's something that, that you can't not know when you, when you, you can't unknow a lot of the stories that, 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 we, that you come across. And so that kind of setback, I think I've learned over the years that it's, um, it, 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 you need to take distance and you need, it comes home with you. And so part of it is how do you learn to not allow it to seep into your life at home because my children and my family didn't choose this kind of work. So it's, it's a kind of, kind of self-processing if you want um, uh, for myself. So that, that's one way of thinking about setbacks. Um, and recognizing that there is trauma in, in the work that we do. The other kinds of setbacks are the kinds of things that really annoy me and frustrate me, which is when I'm dealing with bureaucrats and technocrats and governments and in, uh, you know, in, in big organizations and bureaucracies who could be doing so much more and they're just not. And they're not doing it because there's inertia, because they're lazy, because they're you know, deeply sexist. I have no idea what it is that stops them doing the little bit that they can do. And, and with that, I tend to <laughs> get annoyed, uh, but also consistently try and find practical ways of overcoming it. So part, part of that practical you know, tactics or strategy is to say, okay, we're gonna do it outside the system. We're gonna do our own work and we're gonna bring that into the system. But some of it is also working with them and, and trying to find the good and the um, avenues where we can say, look, here's a step, step by step, this is what you can do. But, but those kinds of step backs, I think, are just so unnecessary and, and they just take up so much useless energy that it's, 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 it, it drives me to just carry on working with the women that I, that I know. <laughs>